Working with power electronics can be extremely dangerous as these big capacitors can hold quite a big charge even when disconnected from the mains. This video is sponsored by Altium Designer. Altium is the leading PCB design software in the world that empowers engineers and hobbyists like me through the entire PCB design process from schematic to PCB layout and design documentation. Altium Designer features an all-in-one PCB design environment with extreme capabilities that can support you in any project that you can think of with streamlined UI, seamless integration, and project sharing capabilities. I've partnered with Altium to offer a 30% discount on any of their subscriptions, as well as a free trial that you can activate immediately on the link below. Do you know when most electronic devices will fail? Just after their warranty period is over. I don't know if that is planned or it's simply a part of Murphy's law, but that is exactly what happened with this air purifier that belongs to my brother. While working one night, there was a slight increase in its operating speed that was then followed by a large bang and it tripped the breaker where it was plugged in. Anytime he tried to reset the breaker, it would immediately trip again, so he knew something was seriously wrong with it and he brought it to me. I've never before worked on such a device, so I was eager to know what went wrong and if it can be fixed or not. I've started by first opening the back hatch and removing the filter, and without any obvious screws, I flipped the purifier upside down and I used a small screwdriver to pry out the rubber feet. As I guessed, there were four screws holding the bottom, so I used the Phillips head screwdriver to remove them. If you ever open a device like this, keep in mind that one of those screws has a sticker on it that will get damaged when removed, and this voids your warranty. So if your device is still under warranty, do not open it. After removing the bottom cover, a power module got exposed and what I immediately noticed is that there are some signs of liquid on the cover. At first glance, it looked as if something had been poured from the top. But once I unscrew and remove the power module that was now exposed, it became clear that the signs of liquid actually came from the power module itself, where the main power capacitor has failed and leaked its electrolyte. The top of the capacitor was bulging, which made it clear that it developed high pressure inside, so when it popped the lid, the electrolyte was free to run on the board and the cover below it. This electrolyte is highly corrosive, so it is possible that because of it, something on the board got shorted and the whole thing exploded. But it is also possible that the capacitor pushed some of the other components beyond their design limits and at some point something had to give. If we look at the resistor before this filter coil, we can see that it is the source of the explosion, as it is all burnt on the bottom and there are signs of burning around it. This board might be salvageable, but to be on the safe side, I found and ordered a replacement online. If you're interested in seeing a repair video on the power board, leave me a comment down below. When the replacement arrived, it was obvious that it had quite a rough journey. The box was all smashed up, but it looked as it is still in one piece. When the board was finally out of its packaging, I realized that it suffered some damage after all. The force of the impact that the board has experienced separated the power capacitor from the solder joints and both of the pins on the board were moving freely. When put side by side, it was obvious that the replacement board that I ordered is not an original part, but it looked as if it had the right components with slightly lower build quality. Having to repair the replacement board is not something that I wanted to do, but I had no other choice and I fired up my soldering iron to reflow them in place. While I was at it, when I ordered the board, I knew that it will be with a different connector than the original board. So I also switched the connector between the boards. With everything prepared, 
I wanted to make sure that the replacement board works and that it outputs the correct voltage, so I carefully connected it on my bench and I measured the voltage on the output. Make sure to be extra careful when working with mains voltage, as it can easily hurt you or even kill you. When measured, the output of the board showed 23 volts, which is close enough to the rated 24 of the original. Now, before handling this board or any other board with large capacitors, keep in mind that those capacitors can hold quite a lot of charge in them, even when disconnected from the mains. If I measure the voltage on the capacitor, you can see that it is charged to close to 300 volt. By accidentally touching any of the exposed pins, you might get zapped, which I can assure you will hurt a lot. To demonstrate just how much power these capacitors can hold, I'll short it with my isolated pliers, and that produces some really powerful sparks. You don't want that crossing through your body, so be extra careful. What was left now is to return the board back into the purifier and I simply followed the same procedure as for taking it out but in reverse. Once everything was back in its place, I plugged the purifier into the mains and I was greeted with the Mi logo and a sound. When I turned it on, it started working as expected, so it was clear that the device was now fixed and I could now return it to my brother. With that. I hope that you liked this video and if you'd like to see a repair attempt on the original power board then be sure to leave me a comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers!